Uh, we're back to talk about uh, the next season of Symphogear, Symphogear G. G. And I am joined today by, as you can hear, both uh, Will. In the distance that day when the stars became music. That's the full title. And there hello, I'm Will, the Dill. <laughs> and we are also joined by Nyard. Hi. Boy, does G build a lot on the first season in great ways and in oh, pretty good ways. Here's the thing, right? <clears throat> from, the, from the first episode... The, the 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 main thing that's introduced and the the most the most important thing throughout the season that we got to focus on is the fact that Maria has a gungnir and it's the same as Hibiki it's it's a mirror it's the black gungnir like Maria her gungnir um interestingly enough uh is not well it's black first of all so it's like they make the, the dichotomy here oh black and uh yeah shadow gang yeah exactly but she she has a cape right and i've always theorized that the cape on maria's gang is her hiding behind that cape like yeah. shielding herself behind the cape this is also yeah. one of my favorite scenes right in the first episode like because when the crowd starts to panic she's like quietly to herself don't panic and then loud don't panic like she told it to herself which in the show later, she even says again, repeats the scene that she told herself to not panic. Not only does she want to uh, like save the world using her her, her sister's song, right? Uh, the the apple, Serena's song. And we have to yeah, have, but... we have to stress like Serena saved basically everyone by singing her like swan song. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. we can have like this this heroism, like this heroism which has with it like grave consequences. Like Canada's heroism had the grave consequences and how far it like impacted Tsubasa and he began season one. This time Serena's heroism influences Maria, but this leads her onto some very specific ideas about what it means uh, 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 to save people. Not that Serena's example misled her, but the kind of pain and the loss that she sees in her having given up whatever she holds dear just to save what she holds dear is I think the same drive that motivates Maria ultimately to go up on that stage and to try and use Solomon's cane to, you know, ultimately yeah, save the, thing, the right? world. When, Sar when Serena uh, sacrifices herself, he she sees every like scientist in the in the in the lab being like, "What the fuck? Why why did our test subject just kill herself?" Yeah, like even though she just saved all of their lives, right? So. Mar Maria might have gotten some ideas from because of that. I was like, oh, well, these people might have not deserved saving. <laughs> yeah, so so evil might be necessary in order to save the world is what yeah, Maria I, gets here. And no, I mean, I think I think she comes down to the idea that that there are uh, very much so acceptable sacrifices, even if if she doesn't want to be the one to have to uh, dispense with that. She she sh she wants to save the world by herself with her own strength and yes and this that's is... that's the problem right it's that's how, that's why she can't do it at the like at the end when she's singing her song and the world does not connect because she doesn't <clears throat> want to connect with people to for that so people can help her do that <laughs> and that that lies at the the crux of so many of the character arcs of season even even in the most like twisted and dark one with with dr ver Exactly. The idea of saving the world and the kind of role the savior of the world has, the kind of sacrifices that are necessary, that have to be done and have to be accepted to save the world and what that means. So in the process of saving the world, they've doomed the world in a sense. And that is kind of like what she has to bear with her, right? Hibiki is bearing this kind of pain that even if she's trying to help people, she might be hurting people 